Hi, my name is Ann Frost, and I'm with my good friend and colleague, Mary Barbara Hanna. And today we're going to give you some information about the leadership differentiator. As you can see, we've identified three, authenticity, bringing out the best in others, and the willingness to give and receive constructive feedback. And the last time we were together, we spoke for a few minutes about authenticity. Today's conversation is going to focus on bringing out the best in others. So just to review, Mary Barbara, in 25 words or less, can you tell us about authenticity? Uh, I can. Does that count against me? <laughs> if, I, if I say I can, does that count against me? Um, authenticity, well, of course, we have this beautiful tagline, be so completely yourself that others can be themselves too. So authenticity is being the real you, being vulnerable, um, letting people see who you really are. And although it seems counter um, intuitive, it's actually a great way to build trust with your team, starting by trusting yourself that who you are is good and worthy and all those positive things, and then extending that trust to your team so that they feel they can be vulnerable with you as well. And everybody can bring their best selves, which we'll talk more about today. I think that was probably 26 words. But it was a good summary. Thank you for that. That was well done. Thank you. So today, let's talk about how we can bring out the best and others, and maybe even why that's important, um, and particularly in terms of performance, maybe some levels of commitment, so on and so forth. And a couple of things, uh, what I enjoy about my partnership with Mary Barbara is she sends me crib notes prior to our little sessions. And as I was looking at those, a couple of things just kind of popped in my head. When we talk about bringing out the best in others, some two things of note, you are what you do, not what you say you will do. And to me, that comes uh, across as doing when you do what you say you're going to do. When I, as a team leader, um, follow up, follow through, I'm consistent about that. When I can't, I let you know, because I can be my authentic self. And we have a high level of trust that I could tell you when I drop the ball, all those kinds of things that instill in my team members a, a confidence in me that I'm there for support and guidance and to help you grow and develop and learn and be, you know, become your better self uh, as authentically as possible. And then the second uh, note that I took away from your crib notes uh, is that level of encouragement, that support and guidance that people need in order to take a risk to take initiative, uh, to keep their level of commitment high when you know things may not be going so well. So being able to encourage folks, no matter what that looks like, in a world that already has enough critics, I think, is, is two of the most salient points that I got out of uh, what we talked about prior to today's session. So what do you think, Mary Barbara? Tell about bringing out the best in others. Well, I think, you know, so we talked about this in our trust video as well, that everything, every bit of leadership starts with how you lead yourself, you know? And if you can't do it for yourself, you really will not be able to do it authentically, as you said, for other people. Um, we did mention briefly, fake it till you make it. That's a whole nother workshop, you know, because that really is an element sometimes of taking on new roles. But in this case, when we bring out the best in others, my first question is, how do you bring out the best in yourself? And as to your point, we all have critics and usually the worst one is our own self-critic. You know, when we are getting up for the day and we have a big challenge ahead of us, how do we encourage ourselves to take that challenge head on? You know, what in what way are we already expecting to fail? Do we just think about all the other ways we failed and it's, today's just gonna be like that again? Or do we start building a track record of times that we did things well and times that, you know, and self-reflection is so key in leadership. You know, not only, we didn't really mention it in authenticity, but I think it's, um, this is a great place to talk about self-reflection. How you treat yourself, how do you talk to yourself um, when you're going through, you know, so Ann and I as trainers uh, historically get 
an evaluation at the end of every single training. So most people get evaluated once a year, right, at, the, at, the, <laughs> at their review time. Ann and I get evaluated every single week and sometimes multiple times in the week because we do multiple trainings in a week. So there might be three or four days every week where we're getting feedback, not just from our supervisor, but from the 50 people that attended the training. So you can imagine 150 pieces of feedback multiple times in a month. Um, you know, it can either mess with your head or you learn to ignore the critics a little bit and find the balance between what is right, what is real, and uh, what is just somebody complaining because they're having a bad day. So bringing out the best in others means, first of all, bringing out the best in ourselves. So as I, I think my point for that was, I can have 99 people say I did a great job and I can have one person say I did a terrible job and I will only think about the one person. You're Not them in particular, yeah. but that one piece of criticism, right? What right. did you say? Yeah. We all do that. Yeah, we, or exactly. We all do that. So to bo do better the next time, you know, I have to think about what I can improve and be conscientious about that improvement during, you know, my next session, whatever that might be, and um, calm down that inner critic that um, sometimes can get really, as Anne likes to say, activated and, uh, you know, and that can throw us off track. So I have to be able to bring out the best of myself. And when I can do that with confidence, then I think I, it's much easier to bring out the best in others. In our authenticity, video we talked about giving space to people to be completely themselves and that's that's the foundation is being authentic and building trust to bringing out the best in others we've created this safe space we trust ourselves we're authentically ourselves so that helps us bring out the best of who we are um, and then for sure the people that are sitting in front of us whether they're your colleagues or you're doing a training or you're running a company whatever that looks like um, really at any point in your life, even in the grocery store when you're up to the checkout line and you know the cashier's having a difficult time because of whatever their issues are, you could easily bring out the best in that person just by bringing out the best in you. Starting off with a smile, asking sincerely, how are you? You know, while it looks like you're having a busy day today and no matter what they throw at you, like, oh, you know, I've heard, I'm sure you have too, Anne, you know, you've had cashiers say some crazy things back to you, like, I can't wait to leave this job or, you know, this place is the worst place I've ever been. Hey man, you're caught them in the moment. So how can you support them right. in those feelings, you know, mm -hmm. and bring out the best in them say, wow, yeah, but still I see you doing a good job and you're sticking it out and I appreciate you. So easy, right? Yeah, yeah. And something you just said kind of reminded me of um, two things actually is when when people feel like their needs are being met. Mm -hmm. um, what I've learned over time is that you could actually break these out in two like very big primary categories. You have we all have personal needs and we all have practical needs. Those personal needs are the intrinsic things mm -hmm. that create that self-motivation in us. Like I'm, in, I'm involved, I'm engaged, I feel supported. There's a high level of trust. Um, those intrinsic needs that we have that in order to be hopefully high performers, committed, so on and so forth, those need to be met. And we all have those. So we have personal needs and then we have practical needs, which will be different depending on the person, depending on the situation, what the job is. Those practical needs are things like, do I have the resources I need? Do I have the support from my leader in case I do drop the ball? You know, then what happens? Do I have authority to make decisions. And with that will come that accountability piece. I need to be mindful of that. So we all have these two broad categories of needs, personal and practical. And I think as a team leader, if we can make sure those are addressed to the best of our ability and given the parameters that we have in the department or the organization, then it kind of it creates a, a level of self-motivation in our team members that they want to take more initiative or they do ask more questions. They come to me because they feel they can be vulnerable and share. I don't know how to do this or I'm really having a problem with whatever it is, project, task. So that they, it's to 
Because a lot of times to me, not only knowing, you know, as a team leader, I, I need to be alert and aware to maybe what you know, your skill set currently is, maybe what you right. would like your skill set to be so that I could provide those things to help you grow and develop professionally. But I also need to be aware of, you know, what it is that you are looking for from an individual, a personal, personal level mm -hmm. and a practical level. And then if I may have a few more minutes, I'd of like course. to make a connection <laughs> between this and, well, how do, how do we attend to both those personal and practical needs. And there's three areas uh, you could put some focus and energy around. The first is making sure that your team members are doing meaningful work or have an understanding that what they do matters, mm -hmm. large or small, mm -hmm. what they do matters and it connects to the goals of the organization or the goals of the department or the goals of our team. I mean, if you wanna drill it down even smaller, because you know, if you get the shoulder shrug or you get the, well, what difference does it make if I do or don't do, then there's a disconnect there, right? Mm -hmm. Between the work that they're asked to do and how it's gonna make a difference. So the more we can reinforce that aspect of meaningful work or helping them get to a place you know, if it is a development issue, um, you know, how can we develop this person into this area where they really get that connection of meaningful work? The other thing um, is individual value and that connects to being an encourager is they need to, to be appreciated. Yes. yes. What I do matters. Hey, Mary Barbara, you know, I really see you making good progress on this. Keep up the good work. Let me know how I can help you even be even more successful, whatever that looks like and sounds like. They need to have an understanding that they're making a contribution to the success of the team, department, organization. And the third is to create this positive environment for folks. And that goes back to authenticity and trust and being vulnerable and sharing what's working, what's not working, what you, you know, what you're having trouble with, what you're struggling with. So the more we can put things in their environment where they have an understanding of what I do matters and how they're making a difference, how that work is meaningful. I think just kind of frees them up so that they can be the best version of themselves. And I appreciate you uh, pulling that out. So can you, so the two, the two types of needs are personal and practical. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then underneath, are the three ways that we can respond to both of those needs. Yes, yes. And that's to, can you say those three just again? Yes. One is meaningful work. Meaningful work. Individual value. Individual value. And positive environment. It is, you know, especially I know that this video, we're trying to make it timeless, but we are making this video in the time of COVID and uh, that positive work environment can often be very difficult to create. Mm -hmm. And again, back to that idea as a leader, you know, how are you creating your own positive work environment? You know, what do you do for yourself to start setting the example? As Ann pointed out in our last video, you know, what example are you setting for other people for, you know, modeling the behavior that you would like to see have happen? So you really have to consider yourself first, encourage yourself first, understand your motivations for what you're doing, find the personal value in what you're doing. Um, and then what the third point, I can't remember. Meaningful work. Meaningful work, yeah. Knowing that what you're doing is meaningful and then helping your team find the same things or reminding people if somebody's having a bad day, you know, mm -hmm. or they're feeling frustrated. Hey, remember when we started out, we were so excited about this piece here. And that's right. not, you know, I was listening to a podcast earlier today and it was very interesting to me because it's hosted by two guys. And one guy jokingly calls himself the Eeyore on the team. And, and so the, uh, the other guy described himself as inside, he's always a sunny July afternoon. And the other guy described himself as Eeyore, you know, kind of like these polar opposites. Yeah. And so for all the Eeyores in the group, the sunshiny July afternoon people can be annoying. And for the sunshiny July afternoon people, the Eeyores can be, you know, a real drag. But the reality is, there, that's their authenticity. 
that's mm-hmm. who they are. But what they bring is still important. They bring levity. They bring maybe, you know, lightheartedness. They bring reality. They bring excitement for the future. So, you know, and all those things that can be in between. So even when you've got people that seem to be polar opposites, you know, recognizing the importance of balance that that brings to your team. You don't want all Pollyannas. It can't always be a sunny July afternoon. Everything would burn out right you know we need some rain we need some nighttime we need all those things so you know your ewers are the same you know whoever that is on your team but that doesn't mean they don't have something great to offer the group right all right Dan let me check time I think we've covered what we want to cover for today absolutely and really our next video then the final one in this series is bringing um Oh, being open to feedback. And we'll talk about how authenticity and bringing out the best in others sets us up to be receptive to feedback and sharing feedback. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mary Barbara. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye. Bye.